Welcome to Prigium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 21 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about retrieving the selected item text, value, and index of an ASP.NET drop-down list. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 16, 17, and 18 of this video series. With that, let's jump into a demo. Here I have a very simple ASP.NET web application project. Let's drag and drop a drop-down list control onto the web form. Now we know that a drop-down list is a collection of list item objects and there are several different ways to add list items to the drop-down list. We can do that at the design time using the HTML source or we can programmatically add list item objects in the code behind file or we can load the um, items from the database table and then add them to the drop-down list or you can bind the drop-down list to an XML file and we have seen these different ways of adding list item objects in the previous sessions of this video series. For the purposes of this demo, we will add the list item objects at the design time using the HTML source. Now, we know that a drop-down list is a collection of list item objects, so let's add a list item. And list item has got a text and a value property. So text is equal to, let's say we want to display the list of continents in this drop-down list. So Asia is the text of the continent, and let's say the value that gets stored against this continent continent is 1. Okay. Similarly, we have other continents, so let's add them. Just to save some time in typing, I have them already typed. Let's copy paste them. Okay. So we have several continents that gets displayed within this drop-down list, Asia, Europe, Africa. Along with these continents, I have another list item objects which says, you know, the text is select continent and the value is minus one. Basically, this is like a prompt to the user to select the continent. So when we run this project now, as you might expect, you know, select continent is what is displayed in the drop-down list. Okay. And then user can select his continent. Now, once the user selects his continent and then click submit button, now I want to be able to retrieve the text and value properties of the selected item. Okay, obviously we know that drop-down list is a collection of list item objects. So each list item has got the text and value properties. So whenever a user makes a selection within the drop-down list, I want to retrieve the text and value properties and display them. That's one thing. Another thing, if you look at this, you know, it's a collection of these drop-down list is a collection of these list item objects and every list item object has got an index within the drop-down list so the index of the first list item is 0 the second list item is 1 and it goes on 0 1 2 3 4 etc okay so every selection that you make in a drop-down list you will have a text a value and an index and we want to you know kind of retrieve those values when the user selects uh, you know a list item in the drop-down list and when he submits the web form. Okay, let's see how to do that. And obviously to do that we need a button control. So let's drag and drop a button control onto the web form. And once we double click the event handler gets generated. So when I click the button I want to be in a position to retrieve the selected items text, value and the index. Okay, and how do we do that? There are several properties that we can make use of. For example, to retrieve the text of the selected item, I can simply say drop down list one dot selected item dot text. And look at the names of these properties. They are very meaningful. In drop down list one, that's the ID of the drop down list, selected item, whatever the user has selected, that items give me the text property. And similarly, if you want the value, you can just say selected item dot value. Okay. Another simple way to get the selected items value is to simply use drop down list one dot selected value property. And to get the index, you can simply say drop down list one dot selected index. And it's so simple. So let's try to do that. And but but the first thing that I want to do is if the user hasn't selected anything, you know, if he didn't make a selection at all, you know, if it it, it is defaulting to select continent. So if he hasn't selected any continent, then I want to show a message to the user, you know, telling him that he need to make a selection. So how do we do that? If you look at the source for this drop down list, this the value for the first list item is minus one. So and we know that to retrieve the selected value, you can directly say drop down list one dot selected value. So if the drop down list one's selected value is minus one, then we know that he didn't make a selection. Okay, so that's how we can check that. So if 
drop down list one dot selected value is equal to minus one then we know for sure he didn't make a selection at all in which case we will write a message saying please select a continent okay now if the selection is not minus one if the selected value is not minus one then we know for sure he has selected some continent from that drop down list in which case we want to retrieve the text value and the index properties and to do that so response dot right we have drop down list one dot I want the selected item text so I can simply say text and then let's use an HTML break here so that the output comes in separate lines so if you want the value then you use the value property and if you want the index you simply say dot selected index it's as simple as that so now let's go ahead and run this obviously when the page renders it displays all the items within the browser uh, within the drop-down list and look at this if I don't make a selection and if I try to click this button obviously selected value will be minus one so you see that message please select a continent on the other hand if I go ahead and select let's say Asia the first continent in the list and click the button look at that the text is Asia and the value is one and the index is also one so if I actually flip to the HTML, if you look at Asia, text is Asia, value is 1, and the index is 1, because index 0 is, is taken by the first list item. Okay, so it's so simple to retrieve the selection from a drop-down list. Now let's say, you know, whenever the page loads, I want to default the selection to some continent, for example, Asia okay so how do we do that we can use the selected value or selected index properties if you look at the you know statement here the selected index and selected value properties of the drop-down list can also be used to have a list item selected in the drop-down list so by default if you want a list item to be selected there are actually two ways to do that one is you know within the HTML you can actually specify okay if you want let's say Asia to be selected by default you can specify selected is equal to true here and that gets selected when the page actually loads but if you want to do that programmatically in the code behind file then you can use one of the two properties selected index or selected value if you look at Asia the the index of this one is one okay and the value is also one so you can either use you know when the page loads what I want to do is drop down list one dot selected index index is 1 and selected index is an integer property so we need to set that as an integer now obviously if we run this instead of defaulting to please select you know Asia will be selected because its index is 1 okay along the same lines you can also use selected value property but then if you look at the selected value property it's a string property so obviously you need to set it set this value as a string so once you pass it as a string you know the output will be exactly similar except that we are using selected value property to set uh, you know the default selection okay now whenever you you set the default programmatically in the code one very important thing to keep in mind is you'll have to do that in in a condition you know you have to do that only when the page loads for the first time you don't want to be doing that in the post back during the post back you'll just understand that problem in a bit L let me run this okay once we run this obviously it will load all the items and then it defaults to Asia now let's say I selected South America and then I click this button look at this it is showing my selection as Asia and then the selected value is one index is also one why is it doing that let me select North America I click this button look at that it is still showing as Asia because when you click this button what happens the web form gets posted back to the server and we have spoken about page life cycle web form life cycle in the previous sessions of this video series so what happens when the request is sent back to the server a new instance of this web form gets created a new instance of the drop-down list gets created all the items are you know added to the drop-down list and then since we 
you know after that the page lifecycle events get started you know during the the page load events happen before the button click event so during the page load event what's happening you know it's selecting you are setting the selected value to 1 which means you are telling okay set the set the selection to asia okay and then the button click event happens after the page load event so in the button click event you are retrieving that selected value okay so that's why any time you do this you know you set a default value within the drop down list you do that you know in if not is post back conditional block because you want to do that only during the initial page load when the first page first loads after that when the user changes the selection post the page back you don't want to be defaulting that again to the default value okay so to correct this problem all we have to do is wrap this inside if not is post back you know I struggled with this when I was initially learning ASP.NET you know I didn't properly understand the page lifecycle of an ASP.NET web form and I was struggling to figure out why the hell is it not remembering its state because page view state restoration happens in page initialization event which happens before page load so at that point you know it remembers the selection the view state gets loaded onto the drop down list but in the page load we are overriding that programmatically okay and then button click event happens because of which you know it de the value will be defaulted to asia back okay so now if we run this it should work as expected the first time when the page loads asia will be defaulted upon a post back it remembers your selection so it defaulted to asia if i select north america i click this button look at that it correctly remembers that On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.